Hello students, welcome back to Dr. Gandhi classes. I am Dr. Gandhi and I am going to continue our study of biology. Last time we studied the cell. Now what is today's class based on? It is based on a process called evolution. What is evolution? It is a gradual process occurring over millions of years. Where a simple life, example cell, becomes complex. Example, a plant cell becoming a plant or an animal cell becoming a human. Evolution is so gradual that it occurs over millions of years as I said and it occurs in five steps. Why do you want to study evolution? Because your syllabus is based on it. First you will study the cell, then you will study the next step of evolution and the third step and so on and so forth. So if you are programmed how the syllabus has been prepared and how you should study biology, it becomes easier to move ahead in the subject. So today I am taking you to the board and I will teach you five steps of evolution, a gradual process occurring over millions of years where a simple life, example a cell, becomes complex, example an organism. We now go to the board. Please follow me. So now you can see Last time I taught you the cell, the unit of life, the simplest form of cell, therefore called the basic unit of life. Example, animal cell and plant cell. Why do we require evolution? That is because organisms start becoming multifunctional and unless they evolve, they will not be able to carry out those complex life processes. So therefore, after cell, the next step is tissues. What is a tissue? Pay attention, it is a group of similar cells. Why should the cells be similar? That is, before they are going to perform a specific function. Example, plant tissues. So today I am going to teach you plant tissues. Next, as the evolution moves ahead or progresses, tissues become organs. So what is an organ? Now it is a group of tissues performing the specific process. For example, Stomach is a group of tissues. Organ. Stomach is an organ. And what is the specific function it performs? Digestion of food. Next, from organs, we go on to organ systems. A group of organs which perform a life process. Now, what is the meaning of life process? For example, root system is so created that life perpetuates in a plant. The root absorbs water. The roots absorb minerals required for carrying out the life processes in a plant. Next, organ systems now become an organism, the final stage of evolution, where a group of organisms, organ systems, sorry, together form a human, okay, and then a plant. So now you can see the stepwise evolution of a simple life to a complex life is based on steps. The first step is the cell, the unit of life, the basic unit of life. The second one is tissues, a group of similar, pay attention to the word similar cells. Why is it similar? Then only they can carry out a specific function. Today I am going to teach you plant tissues, my lecture today. Next, organs. So when I teach you digestive system, we will go there. Okay, then when I teach you in the tech, when I teach you circulatory system, we will go into organ systems. Exactly, that is how the syllabus has been created. So now, after tissues, you have organs, a group of tissues performing a specific function. Stomach, a group of tissues, an organ performing the function of digestion. Next, you have organ systems, a group of organs. Performing a specific function, root system. From the soil, it absorbs water, it absorbs minerals to carry out life processes. And finally, example photosynthesis, example respiration. And so many things are going to happen because of a system. And finally, organisms are organ systems put together. So we are humans or plants where organ systems are put together. So in a plant you have a root system, you will have a stem system, 
we begin the study of plant tissues. So pay attention. After cells, we begin the study of tissues. Plant and animal. Today I am going to teach you plant tissues. We will do it in two parts. So today is plant tissue part one. <clears throat> so now I am drawing a plant. Look here, I am drawing a plant. This then is the root. This then is the stem. In the stem, there are nodes. What are nodes? Rough areas from where branches arise. And on the branches, there are leaves. This then is the step. This then is the root. Now what is the function of the root? To go deep. It has to go deep into soil. Its basic requirement is in search of water. The stem has to become aerial. Why has the stem to become aerial? So that leaves. So that leaves can perform a function called photosynthesis. Remember, plant is the only organism which can produce its own food. So now, we can we have said that the life begins in a cell. So now I'm taking you to two places. Basically, one and two. You can see, these are the tip of the stem. This is the tip of the root. So obviously from here, if you want to take the stem aerial towards sunlight, the stem will have to grow. So now the stem is showing growth and growth occurs. Remember, the stem is going to show growth and the growth occurs by cells division. And when the cells divide, they form a group of cells. When they form a group of cells, they are going to form a tissue. So now I'm taking the root stem aerially. You can see at the tip of the root, there was a group of cells capable of cell division because of which the stem increased in height. Same way at the tip of the root. At the tip of the root, in order to get water, the root has gone deep into soil. So you can see the root has also shown growth in the form of cells present at the tip of the root. These group of cells, cells at the tip of the root show cell division and thus forming a group of cells. And thus forming a tissue. Their main function is growth. Therefore the cells are all similar. They are all showing growth. Pay attention. They are all showing growth. Therefore they are similar. What will you call this tissue? Based on the word cell division. The cells at the tip of the stem and the root. The cell present at the tip of stem, present at the tip of root, are capable of cell division or the cells can divide. From the word merista means to divide. Merista means to divide. This group of cells is called meristomatic Tissue. So the first tissue in a plant is meristematic tissue whose main aim is to show growth in the form of height and that is a primary requirement because unless the plant gains height in the form of going deep into the soil, the function of the root and the apex going aerial, the plant will not grow height. Therefore, this then, the cells or the now we call the meristematic tissue. 
the meristematic tissue present at the tip of stem, tip of root forms the primary meristematic tissue. The primary reason for the cells to undergo cell division. And the meristematic tissue means cells capable of cell division. So I am writing down the whole thing again here. So now we begin here. So because the plant had to increase height, it, the form of growth, the root had to go deep into the soil. In the form of growth, we have the first type of plant tissue. The first type of plant tissue known as merista matic tissue from the word merista cells capable of division the cells are capable of division known as meristematic tissue the first one required meristematic tissues to show growth therefore called primary merista matic tissue where is this primary meristematic tissue found? So you can see it is found at the tip. Tip is also known as apical, therefore called apical meristematic tissue. So where is it present? First, you can see at the tip of the stem. Second, it is present at the tip. Remember the word tip. So it is now present at tip of stem. First, it is also present at the tip of root. Third, you can see the leaves also have to grow. So now at the tip of the root because of which the leaves grow. So you can see it is also present at tip of leaves. Next, you can see Although the plant increased the size uh, in height, the leaves have remained towards the soil. Even the leaves have to grow. Therefore, the area between the nodes known as internodal area or the internodal tissue must also show growth. So now I'm showing it. So now you can see a stem which has become aerial. The leaves have also grown gone towards the sun that is because of this growth known as internodal tissue. So after apical meristematic tissue, the first one, you have the second primary tissue known as internodal tissue. The nodes, you can see this area, this area, the internodal tissue has also to increase in height. So what is the basic function of primary? What is the basic function of primary meristematic tissue? To increase the height of the plant. The cells are capable of division and therefore they show growth. First is the apical at the tip of the stem and the tip of the root. You also find it at the tip of the leaf. These are some examples. Now that the leaves have grown, the plant has become aerial, the soil has gone deep into the soil, you have to also increase the area between the nodes. The node is from where the leaf branches arise and on the branches you have leaves, therefore internodal tissue. This then is the primary meristematic tissue. So if I give you draw, so I am now drawing a diagram of a meristematic tissue. I'm drawing the stem. Look here, I'm drawing the stem at the tip. Pay attention. This then is the stem. At the tip of the stem, you have meristematic tissue. Then from here, you can see a leaf has grown. So at the tip of a leaf, you have meristematic tissue. This then are the leaves. Next, you can see an axillary bud can come up. Axillary bud can form a flower, can form a fruit. 
therefore in the axillary bud is also present the meristematic tissue so you can see i have drawn the three locations to make you understand where the meristematic tissue cells capable of division are present the first one we can see is at the tip of the stem i have not drawn the root next is at the tip of the leaf it can also be present in axillary bud which can develop into a fruit which can develop into a flower so that takes care of the primary meristematic tissue now pay attention logically pay attention now logically if the stem has increased in size has grown in height and this is the root it has grown in height now you can see as the stature becomes tall it can topple the tree can topple therefore secondary to the primary meristematic tissue secondary to the primary meristematic tissue known as secondary meristematic tissue we will have to develop below the outer part of the plant the outer part the outer part of the plant the outer part of plant is known as bark so now in the bark also pay attention in the bark also we will have to create a meristematic tissue why should we create the meristematic tissue called secondary meristematic tissue to increase diameter of the plant because if the diameter does not increase the plant only gains height then the possibility of the tree toppling therefore we have now two types of meristematic tissues primary and secondary the function of primary meristematic tissue is to show growth in the form of increasing height of plant and the secondary meristematic tissue is increasing the diameter of the plant the secondary meristematic tissue which increases the diameter in general is known as cambium so that is the basic understanding of the first plant tissue called meristematic tissue here the cells are capable of division and because of division they show growth first is the primary requirement the plant had to become aerial and the roots had to go deep into the soil therefore at the tip of the stem and the tip of the root we created a primary meristematic tissue from the word tip or apical meristematic tissue next as the plant increases in height we also had to take the leaves area therefore this area between the nodes or from where the leaves arise also had to increase known as internodal tissue so the primary tissue then is made up of apical and internodal the apical is present at the tip of the stem tip of the root tip of the leaves etc next now that the plant has grown in height it is possible that it will topple therefore i create a secondary meristematic tissue on the outer part of the plant the outer part of the plant is called bark so just below the bark so you can see below the bark i have created a secondary meristematic tissue so now you can see that the plant has now become broad or it has increased in girth or it has increased in diameter that is because below the bark i have created a secondary meristematic tissue known as cambium again at the tip you have primary meristematic tissue below the bark below bark you have secondary meristematic tissue called cambium that takes care of that takes care of the 
meristematic tissue. I will now show you how the meristematic tissue looks under the microscope. Now, under the microscope, the one thing you have to remember that the cells are under a state of division. So, therefore, they do not get time to grow large. So, now if I show you a cell before it grows large, it has again, it has formed two more cells. Now, this cell, before it can increase in height and in size, it has grown. Therefore, microscopic. Meristematic tissue. How does the meristematic tissue appear under the microscope? The first thing is the size. The size is small. You can see because they are in a continuous state of cell division, they cannot grow to their full length. Before it can grow, it has to divide. When this divides, then so you can see, you can see how the cells are dividing. Next. When a cell divides, it has to pass its characteristics to the divided cell and the characteristics are present in the nucleus. So the nucleus from this size has to increase because when it divides, it passes the nuclear material to the adjoining cells. When this divides, it passes to the adjoining cells. And so now you can see in general the size of the nucleus is large because the nucleus contains genes or chromosomes containing genes and genes give characteristics. So when a plant cell divides, for example a mango cell, the other cells also will be a mango cell. If it is a rose plant, this divided cells will also be of rose plant. So therefore, nucleus large inside. Third, now I told you that in a plant cell there is a large vacuole, but if the nucleus has to increase in size, obviously the vacuole you can see is absent. We cannot afford, we cannot afford to have a nucleus because, uh, sorry, the vacuole because the nucleus has become large. The fourth one, pay attention. If the cells are large, you can draw one large cell, another large cell, a third large cell. I have drawn three large cells. You can notice that if the cells are large in size, in between you will have a intercellular. Inter means in between the cell, intercellular space. But here, because the cells are small in size and continuously dividing, there is no intercellular space. So these then are four classic characteristics of a meristematic tissue under microscope. There are two or three more, but these four are classics. First, the size is small because the cells are continuously in a state of cell division. Next, when they divide, they have to pass on their characteristics to the divided cell, which is present in the nucleus. So you can see the nucleus is large in size. To accommodate the large nucleus, the vacuole is absent. And because the cells are small, they do not have a intercellular space. This then is the first plant tissue known as meristematic tissue. We go to the other type of tissues. So I will now write down, the first one then is, I will write down here and then create the other one. The second type of medicine of plant tissue, there are only two, I will begin now. The study of plant tissues. The first one then is meristematic tissue. Where is this? What is its characteristic feature? Cells capable of, or cells are capable of division. Where were, how many types were they? Primary meristematic tissue. Secondary meristematic tissue. 
the primary meristematic tissue was first one found at the tip from the word tip meaning apical we call it apical meristematic tissue it was present at the tip of the root tip of the stem tip of the leaves next in the after apical the primary meristematic tissue also had internodal meristematic tissue the area where the leaves are so that when the plant increases in height even the internodal increases what is the basic function of primary meristematic tissue it increases height of the plant secondary meristematic tissue as the plant increases in height so that the plant does not topple you created a secondary meristematic tissue below bark and that is known as lateral meristematic tissue or cambium whose main function is to increase diameter of the so now that the basic function has been taken care we now go to the second type of plant tissue known as permanent meristematic tissue why is it called permanent tissue that is because cells do not divide or they are not capable of cell division but why do you not want them to divide because they have been allotted the permanent tissue have been allotted a specific function so if they divide they will lose this function so you can see now a meristematic tissue cells capable of cell division permanent tissue cells cannot divide or do not undergo cell division for a simple reason they have been allotted a specific function we will now go and study the permanent tissue so i am now drawing the first permanent tissue so now i am going back to your tree which has now gained height which has now gained diameter so this then is the plant this then is the root these then are the leaves this is the soil this is the stem these are the leaves and this is the root basically what are all of them made up of cells what are cells made up of cell sap and what is cell sap having 99% water so now you can see the first permanent tissue i'm going to make must be a protective tissue what does it protect it protects this plant remember it protects this plant from dehydration because the plant is exposed to harsh sunlight increased temperature factors which can take away the water from the plant so therefore the first permanent tissue is a protective tissue pay attention it is covering the whole Plant. So now we have a group of cells covering the full plant. It covers the leaves, it covers the stem, it covers the root, it covers everything. These then are the cells. Like the outermost layer of your skin is called epidermis. The protective tissue is also called epidermis. What is its function? Protection. It protects the plant from dehydration. so that is the first one so the first permanent tissue and because it has got a specific function the cells do not divide because the cells divide it will lose its function so the protective tissue the second one i am creating is supportive tissue again a type of permanent tissue supportive tissue now what does it mean so look here now you can see if i draw the plant again and again i'm drawing the plant so that you realize how evolution has occurred how the tissue cells have become various tissues so now you can see this is a plant this is the root these are the leaves i 
have drawn a leaf specifically picked. You can see it is hollow inside. It is hollow. But the problem is if it is hollow, the root will be compressed by the pressure of the soil. The stem will collapse because of atmospheric pressure. So now we will have to create a tissue so that the root does not collapse. The stem does not collapse. The leaves do not collapse. So now I am going to create a second tissue from the word to fill. Meaning paren and chyma meaning cellular tissue. It is known as parenchyma. The first one. Paren means fill. Chyma means cellular tissue. So I am now creating parenchyma cells. So that when they fill, when they fill the stem, when they fill the leaves, it will give support not only to the leaves but to the cells. So these then are the parenchyma tissue, the first supportive tissue. It is usually present, pay attention, below the part known as the cortex. So it is present below the cortex of the root. Its function is to give mechanical support. It is a supportive tissue. Now, nature does not waste anything. So what did nature do? In this parenchyma cells, it has put the form of storage of food. What has it put here in the parenchyma? Starch granules. The example of which is a potato plant. In a potato plant, you have maximum starch granules. Next, if you go into the leaves, pay attention, the leaves also just do not fill it with parenchyma. Make it useful. So what does nature do? Fill the parenchyma cells. Pay attention. The parenchyma tissue in the leaves is filled with chlorophyll to perform a function called photosynthesis. So in the root, starch granules act as storage of food. And in the leaves, the parenchyma is filled with chlorophyll. Therefore, the parenchyma in the leaf is called chlorenchyma. So, this is the first supportive tissue. I am now going to draw the cells so that when you read your textbook, it becomes easy. The idea was to make you understand the reason for the supportive tissue. It is present in the cortex of a root. It is present in the leaf, it is present throughout the stem. Its function is to give mechanical support. In the root, it acts as storage for starch. And in the leaves, chlorine chyma. Next, so now I will draw the cells. So they are filled. To fill, you require them as large cells. So basically, they are large cells. So I am now drawing the parenchyma cells. So the parenchyma cells. are large. So look here. They are large. So the cells are large. They have intercellular space. Look here. They have intercellular space. This then is the vacuole. This then is the large vacuole present in all plant cells. This then is the nucleus. And as I told you, it has got starch granules. So you can see there are starch granules. This then is the qualification of parenchyma. Large cells, intercellular space, presence of starch granules. So this is the microscopic picture. We then go to the second type of second type of supportive tissue. Now where do you require that support? So pay attention. This then is the stem. This is the stalk. And here you have the leaf. So now you can see the stalk has to be flexible because if I don't make the stalk flexible, the leaf will break when there is too much, when there is harsh wind flowing. So I don't want them to, the leaves to snap. So I have to make this, for example, if I hold this as the leaf and my palm, so you can see my palm is swaying. 
my palm is swollen so that the leaf does not snap so in the palm i have to fit cells which give flexibility so now you can see i am drawing elongated cells i am drawing elongated cells one above the other so that when they move when they move when the cells move what happens it gives flexibility but if the cells move then they will dislocate therefore at the corners i am going to put glue so at the corner of the cells i have put glue so that when the cells move to give flexibility example stalk of a leaf the cells don't move apart so now you have got a type of cells with thickened corners the second type of supportive tissue with thickened corners and the thickening is because of glue from the word glue in greek meaning colon this is known as colon chyma the description is elongated cell with thicket corners the glue where are they present in the stalk of the leaf what type of support they give they give flexibility next the third type of tissue the third type of tissue so you have studied that the leaf is the most delicate part it all the time sways in the leaf pay attention you have two types of vessels one which conducts food known as xylem uh, sorry food which is known as phloem and the one which conducts water known as water conducting tissue known as xylem so this is the phloem and xylem now when the leaf sways it is possible that the phloem and xylem could snap if they snap water will not reach the leaves food will not reach to the various parts therefore you have to create a hard jacket and now creating cells which are hard and they form a jacket around the veins of a leaf so look here i'm creating a hard jacket so that when the leaf sways the xylem and phloem do not swap so i got the third type of tissue known as hard tissue from the word hard the white of your eye is hard sclera known as sclerenchyma the third type of tissue known as sclerenchyma so if i draw the cells look here if i draw the cells you can see the cells are hard because of a protein hard because of a protein which is a hard protein lining the cell wall so now you can see a group of tissues forming sclerenchyma a hard protein the hard protein is known as lignin and because it is hard and tough oxygen cannot enter therefore by default they are tissues made up of dead cells whereas parenchyma and colenchyma are made up of living cells next if you can see here so where is the sclerenchyma found in the veins of a leaf now look at this diagram so what is the characteristic feature hard cells made up of a protein called lignin in their wall dead cells where are they present around veins of a leaf they support the veins of a leaf now look carefully look carefully if i were to strip okay this hard protein jacket so i got one here then i got one here similarly with many many cells if i strip the cell wall made up of lignin you can see i'm stripping off the cell wall made up of lignin and then when i weave i can make ropes out i can make mats out of it so what are ropes and mats made up of sclerenchyma fibers okay next if you notice a walnut this then is a walnut if you drop it on the ground it makes the sound as if 
a stone has been dropped that is because around the walnut also you have sclerenchyma as a protection to the nutritious walnut no sclerit present around hard nuts like walnut also known as stone cells and the last place where the sclerenchyma is present if you cut a pear if you cut a pear so i've cut a pear you can see inside you can see some gritty marks you can see a feel in your mouth you can feel a gritty mass that is also made up of sclerenchyma so that takes care so now we studied the meristematic tissue we studied the permanent tissue made up of protective and supportive in my next class i will teach you conductive tissue okay so that takes care of today's part 1 of plant tissues if you have any difficulty you know my mobile number till then stay safe stay home stay blessed god bless you